Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ape and Eric. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time coming here, feel free to hit that subscription button and enable your notifications because we talk about games every day. Today, we're going to talk about a classic style 16-bit RPG game. Now, this is made by Chemco. They make a lot of these retro-styled RPG games on various platforms. They got them on Steam, they got them on PS4, they got them on Xbox, but we're going to talk about the Switch version of Monster Theater. What attracted me the most, like I said, to this game is the fact that it looks like an old-fashioned 16-bit RPG game that might have came out on the Super Nintendo. You know, it looks similar to games like Chrono Trigger and uh, Super Mario RPG and stuff like that. Like, that was prime RPG times back in the day. Getting your juice box, your Capri Sun, and just really seeking your time into some of these classic RPGs of yesteryear. So, first and foremost, that's the thing that attracted me the most to this game. Just take a look at the screenshots that I'm showing you guys right here. The game is colorful, it's vibrant, the sprites, oh my goodness, the sprites of the characters themselves walking around on the different areas of the world map or the towns and everything just look freaking fantastic. And now the main character, his name is Cutler, he mysteriously wakes up in the woods, suddenly realizes that he's able to talk to different monsters and beasts, and he runs into a girl by the name of Era who controls a magic harp, and you set on an adventure that goes around this whole freaking world trying to figure out exactly who you are and what's going on and stuff like that and you run into various different quests. Pretty basic. I'm not going to go into any more further details of the plot because with RPG games, I don't want to spoil it for you. But, you know, this the writing in this game actually was rather enjoyable. A lot of the characters have their own like little quirkiness, their little quirks and stuff and you run into a lot of characters. There's like over 20 different creatures that you can command to be at your side. Everything from like little snake looking creatures to dragons to uh, ghost like type of creatures and stuff. So you can form your parties. It's a traditional RPG in the sense that it is uh, where you kind of wander around the world map or the selected dungeon or little area. You run into random encounters. It pops up and it's a 2D turn based uh, style classic RPG fight where your characters have attacks. They also have special skills that are like either attacks that can uh, defeat multiple enemies at once or heal each other or do all sorts of different skills based up on what kind of set your character has. Now your characters are able, well at least Cutler is able to change what kind of job he has and based on his job, like for example he can be an angler or a soldier, um, he might have access to certain abilities and buffs that happen between uh, turns in the matches or before the fights even begin. So um, there's also another ability that escapes my mind on what it's called right now at this time, like Cardina or Cardina. Uh, it's like an ability that like that gives you some kind of like advantage or percent of advantage during certain aspects of the battle and stuff. So it's actually pretty in depth. I, I was really impressed with how much this game had in way of the battle system. Now every once in a while, of course, with traditional RPGs, you're able to upgrade your armor. And your uh, your weapons and stuff you can sell and gain different money like that you'll find hidden objects and gifts throughout the areas and stuff like that and there's like actual items that you can obtain that also give you a certain little bit of an edge with certain parts of your characters and stuff like that so it's pretty traditional in the way of how RPGs go as far as like the basic setup goes and everything this really feels like a genuine 16-bit retro style RPG. It's not a bad thing. Um, I've been on a kick lately playing games that are um, similar to what I played growing up. I don't know what it is, especially with RPGs. This day and age though, RPGs can be intimidating. Um, a lot of them can be way too overwhelming when you look at some of the menus and the user interfaces and the combat system. You got stuff with like card building and dice rolling and Sometimes it's just a little too intimidating, so it's nice to uh, check out these games once in a while that play like very simple RPG games. In fact, I think a lot of what Kimco makes are, are uh, smaller RPGs that you're able to play um, if you don't have time to play something that you can sink 80 to 100 hours in. These are like smaller sized, smaller scale RPG games, and I think they're actually 
perfect for people that are busy on the go and stuff. So Monster Theater actually filled that need in. It was like a good little weekend RPG. You know, I spent the greater part of this past weekend just kind of really taking a look at the game and exploring stuff and, and playing and leveling up the characters and stuff. And um, I thought for the most part, it looked really good. Like I said, uh, the, the sprites look great. Uh, looking at the characters of the game, all of them have kind of like a little personality, like I said. Even the monsters, like when you're on the um, battle screen and you have the monsters looking at you, some of them are really well designed. The sprites in this game, some of those monsters were really creative. Um, I, I I didn't even, even thought of like uh, some of them, like the tree ant and stuff like that. And uh, big, huge looking like monsters that have like pumpkin heads and stuff. Uh, I was really impressed with the variety of them and, and you know, the certain locations and stuff like when you go into caves, you'll see like uh, water on the ground and certain aspects like like there was a part where there was like a, a ball that rolled down like Indiana Jones to, that you had to like kind of uh, trick to going on a button and stuff. So there was some light puzzle elements as well. Uh, overall, um, for what it is, a lower um, a lower budget RPG title, uh, it did its job. Again, it was fun to play. It felt like a classic title. Um, the length was just right. It wasn't too short and it wasn't too overbearing. It wasn't something that was like going to make you take longer than what you really have time for in life. It was something that just felt like a good weekend RPG. The battle system was easy to pick up and understand. It wasn't intimidating at all. Um, classic turn-based battle action you know and it was if you if you've played a basic rpg from the retro days you can pick up monster viator and, and check it out and in and, and honesty it's not that bad um i feel that it is a pretty solid pretty solid rpg game that feels like it could have definitely been something that i played back in the day on the super nintendo so for that i was rather impressed now uh, apparently this had been out already on ps4 and steam and stuff like that i've never heard about it I know Kimco releases a lot of RPG games, like a couple every month. And this one, again, what attracted my attention was just the little details in the sprites, in the graphics and stuff, seeing like trees and bushes, breeze, uh, seeing caves, you know, have some kind of like life in them and stuff. For what it is, this game feels like it has some life. It has some great music and everything like that. So Monster Creator, I personally feel if I was to give it an 8-bit Eric game grading scale grade, is a solid 7.5 to an 8. Um, it had a pretty decent story as well. Again, uh, if you like RPGs but you don't have time to play these games, I feel that um, this one is a perfect time sink. So um, it feels dressed right. And with that, I guess um, I can definitely recommend it. Monster Viator on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so yeah, anyways guys, has any of you played this game before? Is there any other Kimco games that you guys could recommend to me? Um, feel free to send them down below in the comments. I really would like to hear what you guys say. And of course, as always, thanks a lot for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if it wasn't for you guys, um, I wouldn't be anything that I am. I really appreciate all the effort and stuff and to be able to sit down and play a game that I feel I can genuinely share with you guys and show some excitement because I know a lot of you guys are retro gamers yourselves. It's a lot of fun and, and seeing the eShop and how big and expansive it is and all the different genres and stuff, I find it exciting to find games that feel like hidden gems, so to speak. And that's why I really wanted to talk about Monster Viator with you guys because it felt like something that um, definitely flew over my head that I didn't get to find out about until just now so even though this game might have been out for a few days or a little bit later I never really seen anybody else talk about it and my goal with this channel is to talk about stuff that uh, and games that nobody else is really talking about which is why I try to play these more obscure smaller titles so I hope you guys really enjoyed what I was talking about with this video anyways don't forget to subscribe if you are brand new if you haven't done it enable your notifications so you can know when I go live or when I update don't forget to like or dislike. Let's throw some engagement in this video. Let me know what you think about this game. Is this something that you would like to pass on? If it's something that you would like to play, let me know that as well, guys. And as always, I will see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Stay safe out there, kiddos. And thanks a lot for watching. Peace out. I love you. I'm serious. I really do. Have a great day. Peace out. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. 
Link below in the description. You want to become part of the hashtag 8BE Nation, guys? Well, be sure to pick up your official merch now available online. Link is below in the description. We got classic t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, and even women's apparel. Don't forget, pick up your official merch now. And while you're at it, guys, feel free to watch the next video or why don't you catch up on one that you might have previously missed. Thanks again, guys, for all the support. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are amazing. And don't forget to subscribe and click that like button if you are brand new. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.